and welcome to the Bender Bunker, where we've been combining hot B-Bender action with country twang guitar goodness since 2017 here on the U-Face channel. And today we've got what for us is kind of a rare occurrence. We don't do a lot of cover tunes. We'll call this a cover lick, actually. We don't do a lot of cover licks here in the, in the bunker. It's not really our style. We usually do one or two a year, mostly Marty Stewart stuff. But today we are going to do our best to give you the Ralph Mooney Pedal Steel intro to the classic Waylon Jennings song, Rainy Day Woman, which the internet tells us was released as a single in the late 74, made it all the way up to number two on the country charts. Not sure what kept it out of the number one spot. Didn't see that listed. If you know, put it in the comments below. But uh, this has always been one of my favorite Waylon songs. And I think a big part of that is, of course, the classic Ralph Mooney pedal steel playing that not only opens it, I mean, Ralph gets the very first four notes of the song. <laughs> You know you're in for a good country two and a half minutes or so time there with Ralph and Waylon laying it down for you. So we're going to go over it note by note as close as I can get you to that pedal steel part with a B-Bender guitar. Uh, I think the B-Bender board certified this is in the high 90% accuracy, so that's good. I was happy to see those results. So I'm going to walk you through it. Now, it's not that long of an intro. That uh, What you just watched there was about 16 seconds, so there's not a lot of Bender notes involved in this. So I'll be able to get you through this pretty quick. And then we'll spend some time after we learn the intro to kind of take the shapes we've just learned and maybe get a few more Mooney influenced pedal steel style licks out of those shapes. So I'll take you on a little journey after we learn the lick. And I'll even show you the, what I like to call the lazy Mooney. That's right, the lazy Mooney, where you can kind of get a Mooney-ish influenced bender lick with very minimal effort, hence the lazy Mooney. So if you're interested in that, stick around. But for now, I'd say uh, get on some cowboy boots. I'd recommend a leather vest and uh, definitely a hat. Oh, and the Bender guitar. Make sure you get that because the intro to Rainy Day Woman is coming up next year at the Bender Bunker. Well, all right, looks like you might be in a Mooney frame of mind. Nice to have you on board. And uh, during the course of this lesson, of course, feel free to play the new drinking game that is sweeping the nation. Started here in the Bender Bunker weeks ago. But during the course of this lesson, anytime I inadvertently move in such a way that makes it look like I have a propeller head, like that, you take a shot. There's your first one. We'll see how many of these we get. Also, uh, if you're enjoying the content of the channel, you'd like to support us in a quick, free, and easy manner, just give us a quick thumbs up while you're thinking about it. Apparently, that appeases the algorithm. And as we all know, there's nothing worse than an angry algorithm. I think I speak for all of us. Also, if you are new to the bunker, this is maybe the first time you've ever seen our channel. Maybe you were attracted by the Ralph Mooney Wailing Jennings uh, symbols on the thumbnail. Then uh, this is what we do. It's Hot Bender Action Country Guitar, and we've got over 50 of these already shot and waiting for you in one convenient playlist. And at the very end of this video, I'll have a jumping off point uh, directly to that playlist if you want to check out more of the Hot Bender Action. So also with the bottom corner of the screen, I think it may be that one. And we've got an express way to subscription. We've got a subscription button waiting for you. Just click on that to join the Bunker family. Love to have you on board so you don't miss anything. And then lastly, if you're a gearhead, you want to see what the guitar is about, the pedals, all that good stuff, just go to the details section below, expand that out. That's where we list everything we use in these videos. And also you'll see the Bender Bunker's PayPal account. If you'd like to send over a virtual beer donation amount of your choice, we always enjoy receiving those. We get awfully parched here in the Texas summer as we come up with these hot bender licks, which in this case I didn't have to come up with because Ralph Mooney did. All right, let's get rolling. Now, the first thing I want you to do, this song is in A going to E back and forth between A and E. And the first thing I need you to do is think about an A chord, but how would I make that with a D chord shape? And that's up here. What is that? 9, 10, 9, your D chord shape. Top three strings. And then E. When we go to the E, of course, E would be down here, just two up from D. But we need to go high octave because we're going after pedal steel games. So we're going to be jumping up all the way over here. So that's 16, 17, 16. And that's going to be so key to what we're doing, especially this high octave E D chord shape. I'm sure you can already hear it. Okay. Let's get rolling with the first four notes that kick this whole thing off. As I mentioned in the intro, Ralph Mooney starts the song with his pedal steel with four notes. The third of the fourth note will employ the bender, kind of sound like this. And so we're making that D chord shape for A here, except we're not really paying attention to the high E. We don't really need that yet. We're going with the B string 10th for a note and then over to the G string 9th for a note. And that allows our little finger time to go ahead and cover the B string and high E top two on the 12th, 
And then once we get to that third note, we're gonna go B string 12th with our little finger, take the bender all the way up fairly quickly, hold it there, and then hit the high E 12th next to it. So those are your first four notes. A. Okay, now we're gonna come up here. I'd have to check with the judges, but I think this might be the highest fret position we've ever had in the lesson here in the bunker all these years. I'm taking my middle finger B string all the way up to the 20th. And then I'm anchoring my index finger on the high E 17th. What we're gonna do once we get the 20th and the 17th in position is we're gonna be employing the bender to drone them together to mimic what Ralph's doing on the song. Right? So once we get in that position, I'm gonna say there's three sections here we're about to learn and they all start with the B string being hit first and the bender going up. And then once we get the bender all the way engaged, we're going to the high E 17th. The first time we do that, we hit the high E 17th twice. So we're starting again, start with your B string to take the bender up and then, that's one. So now we're coming back down. Come back down and then do it again. This time just once on the high E 17th. And then on the third, the third of the three, I'm starting on the B string again like I've always done, except I'm not going so note to note. I'm actually going ahead and hitting the B and the E string together as I take up the bender, droning them together right away. The first two times are more distinct notes between the, the two strings. So here we go. It's... And then when I get to that third one, I drone them together, take the bender up. I do one quick up pick on that high E 17th again. So it's two, one, drone them together, take it up, one. All right, that's that section's over with now. We've got the bender fully engaged, which is good. Now we're gonna use the heck out of this D chord shape for E right here, okay? Get ready to use this a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm transferring over after that third section of the droning, I'm kind of muting the sound a little bit with my palm, and that gives me a chance to change fingering. I'm taking my middle finger now to the high E 17th, and then I'm gonna go back with the high E 16th with my index finger right next to it. And... and now, since the bender's already engaged, I can go with my middle finger over to the B string 17th, hit it to let it down. Comes down pretty quick. And then once it's down, I hit that B string 17th again. And the bender's down. All right, from the top. And the bender's down. Now we're gonna stay right here in the D chord high octave E shape. And then I take the bender pre-engage it again, and I'm going right back to where I was before, middle finger, high E 17th, where I'm gonna be alternating with the high E 16th with my index finger. Just like that, one, two, three, four. And then what we did before, B string 17th to hit it and let it down. Except this time we don't hit the B string again, we hit the G string to complete that D chord shape on the 16th. Now, when I'm playing this up to speed, this part here, the high E part, what I'm, a lot of times I'm picking it once and then just rolling with the two fingers to get less of a pick sound and gets me closer to the pedal steel sound and feel. It's still the same amount of notes, but I'm only picking it once instead of dist distinct picking on each one. You do what sounds best to you. That's kind of what I like to do when I play it on the up to speed. So here we are. D chord shape, the bender's down, and the very last thing we do with this section is we drop down top two with our index on the 12th, and we do three notes. We start on the B string, one note, take the bender up, and then two on the high E 12. All right, so here we are. Now we're gonna come, you guessed it, right back to the D chord E area again. And this time I'm going right back to the B string 17th with my middle finger. And when I get there, I'm gonna anchor my 
index on the 16th high E behind it, because again, we're making that D chord shape for E. And I'm starting with the B string 17th. I'm gonna hit a note, take the bender all the way up, then go right to the high E 16. Come back to the still bent B on the 17th, and then do not, don't hit it as hard as the first time you hit it. This is three notes, obviously, but the third note, make it about half the power as the other two. Which is hard to do. That'll work. So now we've got the bender still engaged and we're gonna retrace our steps here on that D chord shape, alternating again on that high E 17, 16 mentality. All right, so there we go from the top. I do that 16, 17 twirl, I'm picking it once and trying to just roll them on and off of my fingers. And then this last part is going to be the B string 12th and the G string next to it on the 14th. All right, it sounds like this. So let's learn this and be done with it, all right? So we just came off the... B strings 12th. Now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get as close to what I'm hearing Ralph do with the pedal steel and he's not hitting this note clean. He's got a little pre-bent to it so I'm barely using the bender with a slight pre-bent and it's a very abrupt. You'll hear it like that. You can hit it clean until you learn it and then come back and maybe try and get this into the playing. And again it's just a little jerk and give it that sound. And then I go with my middle finger to the third string 13th for one note. And then I roll into the third string 14th where I'm going to be droning between the third string 14th and the B string 12th that I never moved my index from. So here we go. B string 12th, quick little bender. And then we do third string 13th for a note. And then I roll in with my ring finger to the third string 14th. So now it's 14th and 12th. And what I'm doing is I'm up picking, starting with the second string, I'm up picking so it's second string, third string together. And then I'm droning them up, taking the bender up. And when I get to the top, I'm hitting the B string twice. Doing it up and down again with one. Sort of like we did the drum up here where it was two and then one, same thing here. And I don't, if I get enough audio, I don't need to pick it again on that second bender up. So, and again, the less picking we do, the closer we're gonna to get to what Ralph's doing. And then hit the one. So here we are. And then the third time up is two, like the first one was on that B string 12. Notice how the bender's still engaged. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna go ahead and hit the B string 12th, bender down, and then in the very last thing we'll do will be third string 14th. So that section again. It's hard not sometimes to, when I'm doing it slow, it's hard not to hit the high E open. That's what you're hearing, but we really don't want to do that. I mean, it's not horrible if you do. It sounds okay. But really, I'm trying to isolate the B string and the G string on the 12, 14 together. That's it. All right, all together here for context. That's everything you need to know to use your B-Bender to get as close as possible to what Ralph's doing on that classic Rainy Day Woman intro. Hope you enjoyed that. I think what might be fun to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and have Hal in the control room. Hal, yeah, you. I'm going to have him roll the opening again right now so you, it's all going to make sense because it's all just went into your brain. This is Watch the opening again. I'll make it so you don't have to use your mouse to go back and it's going to make a lot more sense. Let's watch.
ties it all together for you. The notes are in your mind and to kind of give you context there with that, uh, the opening again. Now I made that backing track here in the new Bender Bunker recording facility. That was a lot of fun to make. Did it for two reasons. One, I'm trying to avoid any copyright issues. I didn't just want to play over the original, which probably would get this video banned and you would never see this lesson. So I did my own version of the backing track. And then I took the opportunity to lower the tempo down a little bit, believe it or not. If you go listen to the studio version of Rainy Day Woman, they come out of the gates amazingly fast on that compared to what we just did. So I thought to teach it and for you to learn it a little bit easier, I would slow it down a little bit, but go check out the original and you'll see what I mean. Okay, now as promised in the intro, I wanna take the bender shapes we learned for Rainy Day intro and use them to our advantage to come up with a couple more quick Mooney influenced bender licks while we have these shapes still fresh in our mind. I was thinking something along the lines of this. And the blueprint for that was presented to us right on the first four notes of the lesson we just learned. Because what it's really showing us is we were using that D chord, the, the song's in A at the beginning, so we're using the D chord shape up here for A. And that's a very powerful bender position, the D chord shape, but it's leading us right into a very, very powerful bender chord shape that we've always used, the bender box, bender twang box is what we've always called it. So we're going from the D chord bender shape for A straight into the top two and the 12th, and if we add in the third string 14th, we've got the bender box for A. So we're going from two very powerful bender shapes right together, one's leading into the other. Right? And so we're gonna use that to our advantage. Now most bender players, Marty Stewart included, uh, we've even done a lesson, I think the Going Going Gone lesson showed us this. They like to get into the A bender box shape up here like I just described, but they do it from the, the third and, and second string of the D chord shape and it always sounds like this. Right? So they're using the D chord shape to go right into the bender box shape. And what we did with this lesson and what I just showed you there is kind of using the D chord shape to feed into the higher bender box shape above it. Well, let's reverse that. And what I just played you as my example earlier is I started up here in the bender box shape, top two on the 12th for A, and then I went back down into the D chord shape. So I kind of started high and went low and that's how I got that. So let's go over that real quick. Again, I'm using my ring finger and little finger to cover the top two on the 12th. And that allows my other fingers to be able to play down here in the D chord shape for A right below it. So I'm starting with the B string, taking the bender up, high E 12th, little, and then I'm coming back. So it's, I'm coming back to the 12th on the B string. And then what that does when I come back to that third note on the B string 12th, it allows me just enough time to substitute on the high E, take the little finger off and then put my index finger then on the high E ninth. So now I've got these two because the bender's still engaged. That's right, they're droning like we just learned. So I'm doing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then what I'm gonna do is come back to the B string 12th to let the bender up and down. So brought it down, brought it back up. So now we're droning those two, right? Well, what I'm gonna do is now my, my middle finger there is right above the index finger on the high E 10th, and I'm gonna go off of that anchored still with my index there on the 10th. So it sounds like this. Back to the B string, let it down, and then let your middle finger go in and complete the next part of that D chord shape, which is the B string 10th. And then I went to D, so all you're doing is this is your starting point for A, right? It was on top two on the 12th. We're gonna go up to the top two on the 17th, and then we're gonna feed back down into the D, actual D chord shape itself, uh, that's a high octave up. Just take the top two, go up two more to the 19th. Now we're in E, we feed back into the D chord shape for E. So again, we went A, D, and E. And then I 
just did top two on the 17th, back down to the top two on the 12th. <laughs> So there's a good Mooney influence lick just using what the shapes we've already learned. We're just feeding them a different direction. Now let's end on the lazy Mooney. Maybe you're just too lazy. So we're gonna use the bender box, like I said, we're gonna go A, D, and E again. This time top two 12th and then third string 14th. So now we're in A. So let's do something along the lines of Right, just using the bender box shape. So I'm starting with the third string, taking the bender. And I'm just alternating between the high E and the B string once the bender's up. Bender up and down. And then I'm using my middle finger on the B string 13th to do that off and on with the B string 12th. Again, the bender has to be engaged for this. And then I let the bender down. And in third string 14th. Take that exact bender shape down here so it's the top two on the fifth, third string seventh. Repeat that for D. Take that shape up two for E. And that, my friends, is the lazy Mooney. So that's about as much Mooney as I can pack into this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to end with the model that we always do. It is never too late to go on a bender. And I appreciate you watching, and I'll be back real soon with more Hot Bender action. And until then, I'll see you again. Keep it bent.